village full of dead bodies. That's how one area in western Ethiopia was described following a massacre that... In Abiyi's Ethiopia, a deeply unsettling historical milestone has unfolded. Mass burials of human bodies using tractor. Killings of Amhara people who are being slaughtered in their homes, in their streets, uh, even in their churches and mosques, for no reason at all other than their Amhara. Over the past half century, the Amhara community has tragically suffered through a continuous cycle of ethnic cleansing and mass atrocities that could be characterized as genocide. These events have been characterized by gruesome killings, kidnappings, the desecration of sacred churches and mosques, and the widespread destruction of Amhara-owned properties and businesses primarily within the region of Aromia, with a notable escalation occurring after Abbey assumed power in 2018. In the realm of Oromo politics, there is a troubling history of Oromo political elites and political parties consistently seeking opportunities to impose immeasurable suffering upon the Amhara community. Since Abbey assumed power in 2018, there has been a disturbing rise in attacks on Amhara civilians in Oromia. These Amhara farmers have tragically endured an unrelenting cycle of horrifying and gruesome atrocities, with both the Oromia regional government and the Oromo Liberation Army being implicated. These events have inflicted enduring trauma, leaving millions of displaced survivors deeply scarred. They were being attacked just because they are Amharas. Oromo political elite and leadership never missed an opportunity to inflict lasting trauma on Amhara civilians. More than 200 people have reportedly been killed in Ethiopia in an attack in the Oromia region. Prominent extremists, Oromo nationalists from academia and the media joined in calling for revenge, killing and ethnic cleansing. Human Rights Watch, for example, has said dozens of ethnic Amhara journalists were held one of the deadliest mass killings in the East African nation. Most of the dead are of the Amhamra people. The country On Sunday, more than 200 people were killed in Oromia. They were mostly from the Amhara ethnic community. In Ethiopia, the conflicts continue, ethnic conflicts. The violence is, in fact, escalated in many places. Ethiopia has one of the largest internally displaced populations in the world. 1.6 million people internally displaced, fleeing violence. That's a pretty massive failure on your government's part, is it not? In 2019, sparked by a contentious Facebook post by Jawa and the tragic assassination of Hachalu in 2020, baseless accusations were hurled at the Amhara community. The result? The horrific and unjustifiable slaughter of innocent Amhara civilians throughout Oromia, including expectant mothers. Oromo media outlets, particularly the Minnesota-based Media OMN owned by Jawa, have faced accusations of heightening ethnic tensions by spreading irresponsible and intentionally false information with a specific focus on targeting Amhara community, Amhara business figures, prominent Amharas and Amhara individuals employed in the federal government. In the last five years, in a resounding chorus, Amhara voices, ranging from parliamentarians to everyday civilians, diaspora members, activists, academics and journalists have relentlessly implored Abiy to address and confront the recurring Amhara atrocities and shield civilians. Sadly, his responses have carved a disheartening pattern, evading responsibility, belittling the seriousness of the situation and, alarmingly, 
drawing inappropriate parallels like comparing it to U.S. gun violence. During a parliamentary session, when asked about civilian atrocities in Oromia and the need for protection, Abiy responded, Don't listen to those who say we shouldn't plant trees while people are dying. We should plant trees. At least the deceased will have shade. We can't deploy the army to protect every village. With a population of 100 million, having 100,000 troops shouldn't be surprising. In the last six months in Los Angeles County, 224 people died. Philadelphia had 245 deaths. DC had 104, New York 197, and Chicago 300 deaths. Overall, in the last six months, thousands have died in America. In Addis Ababa has large of number of Oromo haters. They hate Oromo, but they want to live in Ethiopia. His response, characterized by indifference and a stark absence of empathy, was profoundly shocking in light of the atrocities committed against innocent civilians, including pregnant women, suffered gruesome deaths. Instead of offering condolences and solace, his remarks were steeped in contempt and heartlessness, further deepening the pain and anguish of Amharis. These responses have fueled suspicions within the Amhara community, raising questions about Abi's possible complicity in these horrifying acts. His apparent indifference towards human life has left people profoundly puzzled. Responsibility for these unimaginable atrocities squarely rests on Abi Ahmed, accused of neglecting his duty to uphold the rule of law and turning a blind eye to these horrific events. The parliamentarian from Abi's party in the Oromia branch publicly accused members of his own party within the Oromo regional government of involvement in atrocities. However, no one has been held accountable and there have been no investigations into these allegations. Abi's inflammatory and hate-filled public speeches targeting Amharis and residents of Addis Ababa have undeniably fueled further tensions and divisions. We have an extremely urgent matter that requires Parliament's attention. Could you please spare a minute? You are not allowed to talk. Shut down the mic. Amhara representatives were prevented from expressing their concerns about atrocities against civilians, with the House Speaker appointed by Abi suppressing their voices. After five years of patience, Amharas felt compelled to resort to armed struggle as they saw no other recourse.